going to be making knit face masks. These face masks are really nice. They are lightweight, they're comfortable, and they stretch to contour around your face quite nicely. They can be a bit of a challenge since you are working with thin strips of knit fabric. The fabric is really light and soft, so it does take a bit of patience and care, but it's worth it for a really comfortable mask. You can make your masks all one color. You can mix and match different trims. You can also do a different color inside so that you can tell the difference between the inside and the outside of your masks. And you can use either one layer or two layers for your mask front. You can visit my website linked below for the free pattern. I'll be making a size medium. For this face mask, you're going to need some stretch knit fabric for both the mask and the ties. The fabric I'm using is a brushed polyester spandex. It is 85% polyester and 15% spandex, so it's got a really good stretch in both directions and it retains its shape quite well. You can have either one or two layers of fabric for your mask. I'm going to be using two layers, so I'm going to place my fabric right sides together and I'm going to trace my pattern onto my fabric Take note of the direction of the stretch on your pattern. And I'm going to turn my pattern piece over and trace one the other direction. This will give me a left and right hand side. And now I'll cut out my mask pieces. I'm going to sew along the front edge of my mask with a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to do so on both sets. Now since we are sewing knit fabrics you want to make sure that you have a ballpoint or stretch needle in your sewing machine and you want to make sure that you're using a stitch that stretches. So I'm going to be using a zigzag stitch today. The zigzag I'm using today is going to have a stitch length of 2.5 and a stitch width of 1. When sewing knit fabrics, I find it's also helpful to use a walking foot. And also when you begin sewing, take care not to start too close to the edge of the fabric because sometimes if you do, the fabric will get sucked down into the needle plate here. Now that we've sewn our seam, we're ready to press it open. So test your fabric. Make sure that you have your iron at the right setting. You may need to use a press cloth depending on your iron and your fabric. I'm going to use a pressing ham to help me press today since this is a curved seam. If your seam feels bulky or if it doesn't seem to be laying nicely, you can go ahead and clip the curves. I'm going to put just a couple clips next to the sharp curve at the chin. Take care not to cut your fabric or your stitches. I'm only trimming the seam allowance. If you're only making a one layer mask, what you can do next is finish these two sides. Simply roll up the edge a quarter inch and stitch in place with your zigzag stitch. Do the same on both sides. If you're doing two layers, place the fabric right sides together, aligning your seam allowances, and pin in place. Next, we're going to sew the two side seams together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So just along these edges here, and we're still going to use our zigzag. Flip it right side out and align the seams once again. 
Make sure the side seams are fully turned out and press. And if you would like to, you can do a top stitch along the edge. Again, also use your zigzag. Once you have your mask assembled, it's time to add the trim. The amount of trim you need can vary a lot depending on the fit and the stretchiness of your fabric. The width of my trim is one and one eighth inches. Anywhere from one to one and a quarter would probably work just fine. The wider it is, the easier it will be to work with. What I would recommend doing before you start is to cut a long strip of fabric for your trim, overlap it one inch, and then aligning the centers clip to your mask, and then try it on to see if it's a good length for you. That way you can adjust the length as needed before you sew. Do take note that once you sew it with your zigzag stitch, some of the stretchiness may disappear. Fold your strip of trim in half with right sides together. Make sure that the fabric is not twisted. Take one end of the trim and lay it on top of the other so that they're perpendicular. To help minimize the bulk when we sew the ends of our trim together, we're gonna sew diagonally. So from this corner to this corner, I'm gonna sew a diagonal line. And the way I always remember where to sew is when you sew your pieces together, you should have a little triangle in the corner. And then when we lay our strip flat, we'll get a long straight line. So I'm gonna pin this in place and then I'll sew this together to make a loop of my trim. If your fabric's really soft and you find you're having a hard time back stitching, one thing you can do is leave your thread tails long and tie your knots by hand if you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off this seam allowance to be about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to open up my strip and press my seam allowance open. The next thing I'm going to do with my trim is to figure out where to place it on the center. Now I don't want my seam allowance to be next to the other seam allowances because it would just be too bulky. So I'm going to go about three, three and a half inches from the bottom of my seam allowance and I'm going to mark it. And then I'm gonna fold my trim in half. And I'm gonna mark the other end. So where I've placed my pins is going to be the top and bottom center. I'm gonna have the pin that's closest to my seam be on the bottom. The fabric on the bottom of the mask is just a little bit shorter than the nose bridge. This pin is close to the seam, so this is going to align with the bottom. So I'm going to turn my trim right side down. I'm going to align my pin with the seam allowance, and I'm going to align the raw edge of my binding with the raw edge of my masks. Next, make sure it's not looped or twisted and take your other pin and align it with the top center. My binding's now in place. I'm gonna sew along the top edge and along the bottom edge with a seam allowance that's just a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna keep using my zigzag. 
Now that the binding's attached, it's a good time to test the fit again to make sure that it fits and adjust if needed. The binding's attached to my mask and now I'm ready to stitch it in place. What you'll want to do is to finger press the seam allowance towards the top of the binding. So gently tug the binding so that it is pulled up. You want the seam allowance facing the edge of the binding. Fold the edge of the binding down and then fold it over your fabric. When you fold it over, it should cover your previous stitches. Now you can fold this all in place at once and clip it, or you can fold it as you sew. I find it's easier for me to put my binding in place as I sew. So as I'm at the sewing machine, I'm gonna fold my binding down and then fold it over. When I get to the loose section, I'm gonna fold the edges of the binding to the center and then fold it in half. So along the whole edge, I'm gonna sew close to the interior fold, sewing it in place. Now when you sew your binding in place, you can sew it with your zigzag just as you have before, or you can use a twin needle. I'm gonna sew mine in place with the zigzag. As you position your binding, you want to take care. You want to make sure that when you fold your binding over, that you are hiding your previous stitches. If as you sew, you find that your fabric's not moving, stop, put your needle down, lift your foot up, and readjust your fabric. This mask, I've also sewn the binding in place. On this one, I'm gonna sew my binding in place with a twin needle. Whichever side that you stitch on with your twin needle will be the right side of the fabric. Since I want the right side of my mask to look really nice, I'm going to have this side be the right side, the part that's already stitched down so that I'll have a nice smooth line where my binding's attached. But this means if I'm sewing with a twin needle, I have to sew with, it, with this side on top. And so my folded side will be on the bottom, which makes it a little bit more difficult to see. So to prepare my fabric to sew with the twin needle, I am going to clip it in place before I begin. As before, I'm gonna fold the edge of my binding over to just before the edge of the fabric. And then I'm gonna fold it over to cover my stitches. And now I'll clip it in place. Now that my binding's all clipped in place, I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and sew from the right side with a twin needle all the way around. I'm gonna sew close to the interior fold on this edge. I'm ready to start my twin stitching. I have my twin needle in my machine and I have it set to a straight stitch with stitch length three. 
And that's all there is to it. Our mask is now finished. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Happy sewing.